Maya, we don't hear you. Okay. okay. Can you hear Perfect. me now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So, hi, everyone. And thank you for the organizers. Thank you for having me. I'm really pleased to be able to talk at this conference. And so today I'm going to talk to you about classifying high dimensional Gaussian mixture and in particular comparing kernel methods and neural networks on this task. This is joint work with Sebastian Gold, Florence Kratzkala and Lenka Zeborava. So, ah, there I apologize. I think I can't move with my slides. Okay, so to give you a bit of background, uh, in 2018 came out this result that showed that why neural networks with an appropriate scaling behave just as kernel methods. Concurrent empirical work showed also that on some benchmark tasks, kernel methods do almost as well as neural networks. So this raises the fundamental questions of whether neural networks can only learn efficiently if kernel methods can also learn. So the answer to this seems to be no. Like for instance, Shizine Bach showed in 20 that neural network can grasp the underlying low dimensional data structure while kernel methods cannot. Furthermore, Gorbani and all showed that data structure can break the curse of dimensionality for neural networks while they can't for kernel methods. Fundamentally, both these works focus on the mean field regime of neural networks, which is a regime in which the hidden layer is sent to infinity um, which means that the neural network is very large, while we instead focused in the opposite limit in which the network has order one hidden node. So in order to answer this question, the distribution we used was a Gaussian mixture distribution in which each sample is, comes from a cluster with a probability P alpha, and given the cluster it comes from, it's then distributed according to a normal distribution uh, with some mean and a covariance matrix. And for simplicity in this talk, I'll just focus on the case in which the covariance matrix is proportional to the identity. So given this distribution, this is how the data is sampled. And this distribution also defines a signal to noise ratio. Uh, crucially, uh, note the square root of D factor in the mean, which says that basically the displacement of the mean and the distance between them is an order d smaller than their average width. This setting is also the one studied in many, many works in unsupervised learning and in supervised learning, for instance, in Mignac and O and the large and O. We're even going to boil it down to a simpler data distribution. We're going to boil it down to XOR-like mixture in which the means of the mixture are along uh, the x-axis and the y-axis, and a distance one away from the origin. And we're going to study um, two types of architectures on this distribution. So if I show you this first plot, you might tell me, okay, this is a very simple model. I can basically see bare eyes uh, how I should separate this mixture. However, what one must remember is that the network doesn't have access to which ones are the two relevant directions. And so that we must be careful to take our low dimensional intuition and bring it into high dimension. Because if I show you this problem in high dimension, well, what you're going to see probably looks much more like this. And so you can instantly see that the task is harder. So the networks we're going to deal with are on the one hand, two layer neural networks with a small hidden layer with order one hidden nodes, uh, activation function J and in which both layers are trained we're going to compare these to the random feature model in which the input is first projected into P dimension by a projection matrix F, which it, we take to be an IID matrix. We then apply a nonlinear function to obtain the features upon which we just do linear regression. So as you know, random features can also be seen as a two layer neural network in which the first layer is kept fixed. Okay, so our goal is going to be to compare the random feature model and two layer neural networks on the Gaussian mixture data set. So we're going to be given a data set with samples and labels. We're going to train on the mean squared error, but then evaluate the performances on the classification error. 
Our working assumptions will be the typical thermodynamic limit in which both the input dimensions and the number of features are sent to infinity with the ratio kept fixed. And also we'll be using one pass stochastic gradient descent where each sample is used only once in the training procedure. So first, what are our observation on this sort like mixtures? Well, one might say that, okay, I can compute an Oracle-like performance in which I am given knowledge of the means. And once I take a point, I assign to it the closest cluster. I can then compute the theoretical classification error of this Oracle. Now, by looking at how a two-layer neural network is going to learn the task, I can see that for OSNR, this two-layer neural network is able to achieve Oracle-like performances. In a sense, for, uh, with four hidden nodes, it's able to learn the mixture and to align each node to uh, the means of the mixture. In sharp contrast, however, when I use random features, what I see is that there is a wide range of SNR for which random features cannot do better than random chance. And so that random features can only learn if the SNR is high enough. So can you understand this from a theoretical standpoint? Let us start with the two layer neural networks. So uh, the setting we're gonna analyze has a long history, but it was typically analyzed in a teacher student scenario where the label is conditional in the input. Now we're gonna flip this generative model and not have a teacher anymore. We're going to have an input which is conditional on the label. And our aim is to compute the prediction mean squared error at all training times. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first step is to write the mean squared error as a sum, uh, as a sum over the expectation, the conditional expectation of the input stemming from the different clusters. We're then going to notice that the input appears in this expression only for its low dimensional projection on the weights of the students, and that therefore I can replace the very high dimensional expectation of the input over a low with a low dimensional expectation over the local fields. Therefore, what I see is that the mean squared error only depends on these local fields and is completely determined by the first two moments of these fields. Uh, these uh, can be seen as a student mean overlap and as a student student overlap and are commonly known as order parameters in statistical physics. So given that the PMSE is only a function of these order parameters, by computing the dynamics, the training dynamics of Q and M and obtaining a closed set of ODEs tracking their dynamics, we can, we can have the MSE at all training times. And so this analysis is valid for any activation function and also for any arbitrary uh, Gaussian mixture with the constraint that the covariance matrices must be jointly diagonalizable. However, for simplicity, and since uh, here we wanted to analyze the performance of two layer neural networks and random feature, we're going to focus on XOR like mixture. Now, something else that is of interest to us is to assess the asymptotic performances of the neural network, that is their long time performances. However, if I take the ODEs I've just derived and integrate them until, find, until convergence, this requires to update K squared equations at every time step, and so it takes very long. So the idea is then to say that we have an ansatz for the final order parameters and their final configuration. This ansatz is used, uh, is based on the symmetries of the system, for instance. And this allows us to write a system of equations with only k degrees of freedom instead of k squared. Iterating the equations until we find a fixed point uh, allows to efficiently compute the long time performances. And so comparing this method with simulation, we can see that indeed it works pretty well. We can also go a bit further and see how the two layer neural network actually learns the mixture. And so what we see is that the network is able to recover the optimal configuration in time. And that only four nodes are sufficient to learn this task and achieve close to optimal performance. 
Okay, let us now go back to our problem and see if we can analyze uh, random features. So as we know, since random features only perform linear regression on the features, their performances is completely determined by the first two moments of these features. So what we need to study is how uh, the, this network, uh, how the projection transforms the distribution. Now, interestingly, the distribution of the features is still a mixture distribution. That means we can study the transformation of only one cluster. So why do random features fail at low SNR? This is what the question we want to answer. If we write explicitly the expression of the features, what we see is that the term stemming from the position of the mean actually scales like one over square root of d which means that if the noise term is of order one, we can expand the activation function around this term. Hence, if we write the expression of the mean of the features, what we see is that given these constants that only depend on the activation function, well, this transformation is essentially linear, which means that if the mixture is non-separable in input space, it will remain non-separable in feature space which means that linear regression cannot hope to learn them. So doing a similar expansion, we can also find the covariance matrices of the, of the features and see that uh, they have a Martian copastor form. So here, this is an illustration that basically shows that if the signal to noise is too high, well, then the mixture in feature space remains non-separable and that the random features actually require very high signal to noise ratio in order to be able to separate this mixture. So we went a bit further than that and also analyzed how the uh, error scales with the relevant quantities in the problem. And what we found is that actually the classification error is a function of noise times the square root of the input dimension divided by the number of features to the power of one fourth. And so one may ask, okay, but if I take the number of features that scales as the input dimension squared, then maybe random features will be able to learn well. However, we know from a recent result of May and Al that the error is actually a function of the minimum between the number of features and the, and the number of sample. Therefore, that if we want the random features to be able to learn this mixture, we need a number of samples that scales as the input dimension squared. And this regime is not accessible by our summer dynamic limit in which this number of sample is taken to scale linearly with the input dimension. And so to resume the results, we see that at low signal to noise, um, the, uh, the, the kernel only does a linear projection into feature space. And so that means random features cannot do better than chance. Then at a fixed value of signal to noise ratio, we see that the nonlinear effects kick in, the mixture becomes separable in feature space and the network is able to learn. And so just to conclude, what we've seen is that two layer neural network can achieve optimal Oracle-like performances in classifying Gaussian mixtures with almost all value of the signal to noise ratio. We found uh, analytical equations that are able to track the dynamics of training at all times. And by making an answer on the order parameters, we can actually assess efficiently the long time performances. On the random feature side, what we've learned is that the transformation feature space is linear unless the SNR is bigger um, than a certain threshold quantity. And so this means that the random feature it requires either very high SNR to learn or the minimum between the number of features and the number of samples to scales as the input dimension squared. And so I think I was maybe a bit quick, but uh, thank you all for this for your attention and 